presentation of Blue Sky Bluegrass is made possible in part by a grant from Florida Public Broadcasting Services, Incorporated. Tonight, the sounds of authentic American music from one of this country's best flat pickers, Blue Sky Bluegrass presents Doc Watson. Blue Sky Bluegrass, and we'll get it cranked up here, Michael. Well, a good old timer that's been around, <clears throat> uh, I guess, home, well, not as long as I have, but near about. <laughs> Called, they call it that good old Mountain Dew.
Thank you. You know, I bet we have some folks here in the audience as well as I know we got some folks looking in on us that have uh, probably met, and I know some of you have met him, and well, a lot of you have heard the late John Hurt's music. I learned a song from Brother John one time back in the 60s called Make Me Down a Pallet on Your Floor, That just a fine good old song. And before we get any further down in the show, I better tell you who this man is over here on the bass. He comes from Nashville, Tennessee, and they call him D. Michael Coleman. Let's make him welcome, would you? Good friend of mine. Matt Doc Watson, as usual, he uh, kind of picks like he picks, you know. I don't try to copy John's music on this. I just sort of pick it like I pick it. Sleeping my back and shoulders tired. <clears throat> the way I've been sleeping, my back and shoulders tired. Well, the way I've been sleeping, my back and shoulders tired. I think I'll turn to try sleeping while on my side. Yeah. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Make me down a pallet on your floor. Honey, make it down, make it salt and low. But then, baby, my good gal, she won't know. <laughs> I gotta tell y'all a little tale right here before we get into this, this next song. 
um, <clears throat> there was um, four, three old boys died, and they decided uh, uh, they didn't want to go to the other place, so they went up to heaven. And they got up there, and they got to talking. And one old boy says, hey, he said, how did you leave the good old earth? And he says, well, you know, he says, I was going down the highway one night and going home from work, and I was pretty tired, and I guess I looked off at the wrong time and hit a big old semi. And the next thing I know, I was on my way in the gate. He said, I really am glad to be here. The other old boy says, well, now, I had a bad heart attack. I was working too hard, I guess. And he said, that's how I got here tonight. And the third fellow that was sitting there listening to all the conversation, he looked kind of sheepish, like, you know, he, he, he looked like he was guilty or something. And they oughtn't to be there. But they hadn't asked him no questions, and all at once one of the boys turned around and said, well, by the way, how'd you get here? He says, well, you know, I, I got here on a kind of sinus trouble. He says, now, wait a minute. He said, they ain't never heard tell of that. He said, there's sinus trouble. No, he says, that ain't it. He said, I was with another man's wife, and he seen us. <laughs> Yes. I'm going to pick in a little tune here that I learned from the Delmore brothers. I went it back in my teens. And uh, of course, I couldn't pick it that good then because my guitar wouldn't sound like both of theirs. All right, Michael, the Deep River Blues.
thank you. Thank you so much. I was talking with a, uh, one of the well-known folklorists of England once about an old song that I do sometimes called A Roving on a Winter's Night. And Mr. A.L. Lloyd said that this song was made up of bits and pieces of some much older English songs. I learned it from a relative back in the 60s when I was in the uh, so-called folk music revival. Michael Coleman here sometimes calls it the folk scare. He said uh, rock and roll was dead, so you had to listen to folk music. And that's what they told everybody so they could get all the folk festivals going. I guess a good thing got us back to our roots. Anyway, here's a song. one that every country guitar pick of the years has played, and I figured I might as well try my hand at it and see if I could ruin it, and it's called Under the Double Eagle. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> now, let me get that damson flavored harmonica up here so I'll be in the right key for this, and then we'll do a good old Leroy Carr blues, one that, uh, well, I actually didn't learn it from a, a Leroy Carr recording. I learned it from an old boy that did some early 78 records called Barbecue Bob. He's from Atlanta, Georgia. He ran a little barbecue stand over there, and some old boys from the, one of the record companies came by in the late 20s, and he'd uh, serve them some barbecue, and then he'd pick them a little song, kind of entertain them, and they'd always got pretty good tips for that. And one old boy said, hey, why don't you come over and cut a few sides? That's where the expression cut come from, because in them days, they didn't have no tape machines, and you literally did cut the, the master or the product that made the master from on acetate. Hey, I'm getting technical here. Let's quit that and get into the song. You don't know my mind. This song's called Windy and Warm.
Thank you. Another favorite of mine in the uh, old school of musicians that come along and pioneered in the country picking and made it what it is today is Mr. Merle Travis. Now here's a little tune he wrote called Natural Born Gambling Man. You ask me why I ramble and you want to know why I roam. You've been wondering why I run all around and I ain't never had a home. My daddy was a gambler and he rambled all over this land. I'm just a chip off the same old block. I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Yes, a natural born gambling man. I can go a step and follow where they live. I'm a natural born gambling man. Rambled off down to Memphis and then a meadow old one-eyed Sam. He said, come here, son, let's have a little game. So I throwed my money down, but he snuck one off of the bottom. I seen him when he got his hand. Lord, I pulled my gun and I mowed him down. I'm a natural born gambling man. Well, they hauled me over to Nashville, of course, and they locked me in a dirty old cell. But they give me a number for my name. Was a number that I love so well. It is three sevens and an eleven. <laughs> That's a good hand. I know right then that I won again. For I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Bet you ten that you can't win. For I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Yes, I'm a natural born gambling man. I can go set man, follow with the left. I'm a natural born gambling man. I'm a natural born gambling man. Cotton in the forks of the branch. I'm a natural born gambling man. Thank you. This little country church got him a, uh, a new preacher one year. They decided they wanted one of the fellas that knew the five dollar words, and he was the kind of fellow that liked to ride around in a Cadillac and wore a suit and tie the whole week long, you know. And, He's riding along the road one Sunday afternoon and a little red pickup showed up in his rearview mirror and there was an old boy that had a few too many that morning to kind of sober up on and he's a wobbling over the white line and he didn't get back. And this old uh, boy looked over at his wife, the preacher did, and he says, poor fella, he must be sick. And he said under his breath, about that time that little red pickup went by and he said, first chance I get a better hit my passenger and get around that darn fool to run me out of the road and kill me. He stomped down on that Cadillac and when he comes to the corner, she won't make it. <laughs> and tears that car all to pieces. Little old red pickup comes wobbling up to the edge of the embankment and <laughs> missing on about two or three cylinders, you know. And the old boy gets out and crawls and stumbles over to the edge of the road and he looks down and he says, Hey, buddy, you hurt? And the old preacher stuck his head out of the wreck, kind of trying to help his wife out, and he says, No, we're not hurt. The Lord's riding with us. He says, Well, I'll be dang, if you hadn't been let me take him the rest of the way, you're going to kill him. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> that sounds like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> All right, Michael, don't, don't you laugh. Don't, don't you say no word. <clears throat> now here's one called the Freight Train Boogie.
Casey Jones, he was a mighty man, and now he's resting in the promised land. The only kind of music he can understand was a big eight-wheeler under his command. He made a freight train boogie all the time. He made a freight train boogie as you roll down the line. Right here is a, a, another one of them ballads. Well, this one reverses, reverses the situation a little bit. Instead of losing his true love, he shoots her. It's called Little Sadie. Usually the folks used to pick this on the banjo, but I kind of love the guitar the best, I guess. So I played on the guitar. <laughs> One night for to make a little round I met little Sadie and I shot her down Then I went back home and I got in my bed A 44 pistol under my head I waked up the next morning at half past nine The hacks and the buggies all standing in line The gents and the gamblers standing all around They were taking little Sadie to her burying ground Begin to think of what a deed I'd done. I grabbed my hat and away I run. I made a good run, but a little too slow. They overtook me in Jericho. I was standing on the corner reading the bill. Went up, stepped the sheriff from Thomasville, and he says, Young man, ain't your name Brown? Remember the night that shot Sadie down? Yes, sir, my name is Lee, and I murdered little Sadie in the first degree, in the first degree, in the second degree, and if you got any papers, won't you read them to me? Well, they took me downtown, dressed me in the black, they put me on the train, and they carted me back, crammed me back in that Thomasville jail, and I had nobody for to go my bail. And the jury, they took their stand The judge had the papers in his right hand Forty-one days, forty-one nights Forty-one years to wear the ball and the Whole wide world, way down the middle. 
let your deal go down Don't let your deal go down For my last old dollar's gone Put my sweet love behind at home And she's standing in She throwed her pretty little arms around my neck She said, sweet daddy, please don't go Who's gonna shoe your pretty little feet, honey? Who's gonna glove your little hands, yeah. And who will kiss your ruby lip? Tell me, who's gonna be your man? She says, papa will shoe my pretty little feet Mama will glove my little hands You get them high heel shoes, that dress that you wear so fine. Got my shoes from a railroad man, my dress from a driver in the mine. Don't let your deal go down. Don't let your deal go down. Don't let your deal go down. For my last old dollar's gone. called Smoke Smoke. Now, I'm a fellow with a heart of gold, with the ways of a gentleman, I've been told, the kind of a guy that wouldn't even harm a flea. But if me and a certain character ever met, the guy that invented the cigarette, I'd murder that son of a gun in the first degree. Well, it ain't because I've been smoking myself, and I don't reckon they hinder your health, for I smoked them about half my life, and I ain't dead yet. But nicotine slaves are all the same at a betting party or poker game. Everything's gonna stop while I have a cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Pop, pop, pop that if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter and the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait. You just gotta have another cigarette. Chance the other night, the old Aunt Fortune was doing me right. The kings and the queens just kept a coming around. I caught a fool, and I bet him high, but my bluff didn't work on this certain guy, cause he just kept a raising and laying his money down. He'd raise me, and I'd raise him. Whew, sweated blood got a sink or swim, but he finally called, and he didn't raise the bet. I said, Ace is full, pal. How about you? And he says, Well, I'll tell you a minute or two, but right now, I just gotta have another cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. You smoke yourself to death Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate That you hate to make it wait You just gotta have another cigarette The other night then I had a date With the cutest little thing She sure did rate She was a hybrid uptown fancy little dame <laughs> She said she loved me, and it seemed to me that things just about like they ought to be. So hand in hand, we went walking right on down Lover's Lane. She was blue so far from a chunk of ice, and our smooching party was going real nice, and so help me both. I think I might have been there yet. But I gave her a kiss and a little squeeze, and she says, Doc, excuse me, please, but I'm just bound to have another cigarette. Ruined my vanity. Pop, 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 that cigarette. Oh, yeah. Pop, 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 pop it if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that she hates to make it wait. You just gotta have another cigarette. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.
That little tune right there was written away before they ever decided that cigarettes would for sure kill you unless there was something already, something already wrong with you, you know. <clears throat> Travis, uh, I guess, sort of wrote it with Tex Williams in mind. Or, I don't know, but anyway, Tex had the big record on it in the late 40s. And I didn't even know that Merle Travis wrote it until later. Here's a song that all the flat pickers enjoy, and I'll not tell you what it is, I'll just pick it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know some of y'all have, have uh, been a, a wondering about, well, where's that Merle Watson at? Well, he's here, and after this song, this next song, he's going to come up here and play some good old slide to wind out things with. Going to do one here called the Tennessee Stud. I know everybody's been waiting a moment to do that. Because Jimmy Driftwood writes a mighty good song when he puts his mind to it. About 1825, I left Tennessee very much alive. And I never would have gone through the Arkansas mud if I hadn't been riding on the Tennessee stud. I had some trouble with my sweetheart's pa, and one of her brothers was a bad outlaw. I sent her a letter by my Uncle Fudd, and I rode away on the Tennessee stud. The Tennessee stud was long and lean color of the sun and his eyes were green he had the nerve and he had the blood and there never was a horse like the tennessee stuff one day i was riding through a beautiful land when i ran smack into an indian Jumped their nags with a whoop and a yell, and away we went like a bat out of well. I circled their camp for a time or two to show them what a Tennessee horse can do. The redskin boys couldn't get my blood, cause I was a riding on the Tennessee stud. The Tennessee stud was long and lean, the color of the sun, and his eyes were green. He had the nerve and he had the blood, and there never was a horse like the Tennessee stud. So we drifted on down into no man's land Across that river called the Rio Grande I raced my horse with a Spaniard's foal Till I got me a skin full of silver and gold Me and a gambler, we couldn't agree We got in a fight over Tennessee 
jerked our guns and he fell with a thud and I got away on the Tennessee stud. Get up there, boy. The Tennessee stud was long and lean, the color of the sun and his eyes were green. He had the nerve and he had the blood and the devil was a horse like the Tennessee stud. I got just as lonesome as a man can be, a dreaming of my gal in Tennessee. The Tennessee stud's green eyes turned blue, cause he was a dreaming of a sweetheart too. He's a big fella. So we looked right back across Arkansas, a beat up for brother and a hat to slap for paw. The one that found that gal with the golden hair, she was a riding on the Tennessee man. Oh boy. Tennessee stud was long and lean, the color of the sun and his eyes were green. He had the nerve and he had the blood, and he never was a horse like the Tennessee stud. Stirrup to stirrup and side by side We crossed the mountains and the valleys wide We came to take muddy then we had to board a flood On the Tennessee mare and the Tennessee studge Heard a little baby on the cabin floor A little horse coat played round the door I love that gal with the golden hair And the Tennessee stud love the Tennessee mare And these good horses too The Tennessee stud was long and lean green he had the nerve and he had the blood and there never was a horse like the tennessee stud I'd like to introduce my son, Merle Watson. Here's one called, a good old Jimmy Rogers tune called Peach Picking Time and Georgie. <laughs> Everybody picks on me when it's roundup time in Texas and the cowboys make a beat. Way down in North Carolina, it's gal picking time to be. The They got their bluegrass in old Kentucky. Virginia's where they do the swing. Caroline, I'm coming, coming down to spend the spring. Arkansas, I hear you calling. I hope to see you soon. There I'm gonna do a little picking underneath that old hard moon. Hey, All right, Mom. to 
I believe a fella named Bo Carter wrote this next tune called Rangeman Blues. Merle, let me hear you on that thing, son. <laughs> Baby, I will split your kindling, honey. I'm gonna build a fire. I'll do anything your little heart desire, mama. Hey, can you tell me who might your manager be? If you ain't got a manager, no arrangements for me. Well, I know I ain't too handsome, and I don't dress too fine. But when it comes to loving gal, I'll pass by your mind. Oh, mama, hey, can you tell me who might your manager be? Yeah, you ain't got a manager, please. Your arrangements are for me. Then, all right, son, arrangements. Hey, Like the Tennessee stuff. 